I'm, I'm recording now, so go ahead. So I'm Monty Zweeb, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Spice Machine. Uh, we are the Hadoop RDBMS, and what we do is replace Oracle when it hits a wall or um, from a performance or scalability perspective or even from a cost perspective and give you a little bit of background on myself first. Um, I'm a computer scientist by training. I went to Carnegie Mellon and Stanford for my degrees, spent a lot of time in the artificial intelligence world. Um, one of the things that was probably the most fun for me is running an artificial intelligence research lab um, at NASA Ames in California. And we had a great machine learning lab, planning, scheduling, and other kinds of cognitive and, and AI-oriented software. Kept on um, doing research, but got the itch to do something real and found a project at the at Kennedy Space Center that really needed automation. And that was the preparation of the space shuttle for launch. It was being planned and scheduled by uh, hundreds of people in a room with magnetic strips on a wall to coordinate their tasks. And we deployed a heuristic scheduling system that ended up saving the government a great deal of money and, and made it much safer. And uh, we won an award for that. And it ended up being the software and idea behind my first venture. And that was a company called Red Pepper Software. And Red Pepper Software was a manufacturing supply chain application that instead of planning the repair of space shuttles, planned manufacturing distribution operations. That became the heart of the PeopleSoft manufacturing product. And PeopleSoft eventually bought us. And I became an executive at PeopleSoft. That was great. I learned a lot about how to build a large selling and marketing organization, but got the itch to do something entrepreneurial again and started a small software company called Blue Martini Software. It was venture backed in 1998, went public in 2000, that's how fast we grew, and became the heart of e-business and, and, and uh, relationship marketing applications. So that was a fantastic time. We eventually sold it in 2006. I did a media venture after that. I also sit on the board of Rocket Fuel, which is an AI-based ad tech company that just recently went public. And I also sit on the Carnegie Mellon um, University's Dean's Advisory Board. Okay. So um, that's essentially my background prior to Spice Machine. Mm -hmm. so, so what got you into uh, the big data industry? Like what made you want to get in there? Yeah, it's a great question. So um, I got to get first exposed to big data at Carnegie Mellon and the um, Dean I think in 2008 or nine, something way early, started to talk about what's happening in, with new architectures and exposed us to the Google paper on MapReduce mm. and essentially helped bring the big data architectures into the research program at Carnegie Mellon. And I just was enamored with it. I've always been extremely interested in distributed architectures and was watching it very carefully. And then I watched. Uh, Rocket Fuel around the same time be founded and grow its company by building an optimization engine that in split seconds figures out what's the right ad to put in front of the person at that time and what price are we willing to pay for that ad. And to be able to do that at scale in milliseconds was truly remarkable and the infrastructure they put in place was amazing, all built on Hadoop. Hmm. And as I learned more about what they did, I looked and saw that they were hiring the best PhDs from MIT, Stanford, and Carnegie Mellon. And they had the best engineers from Yahoo and other places building products. And I thought to myself, there is no way that this skill set is going to be affordable in the global 2000. Hmm. So that's when one of my former coworkers from Blue Martini called me up about a big data idea that he had in building a real-time big data database. He's on our CTO, John Leach. And the two of us realized we both had the same ideas. And that's when we realized that the best opportunity is to bring essentially the first scale out RDBMS available on the Hadoop stack that can power applications. Hmm. And so this was an eye opener for us because everyone out there building on Hadoop and big data really were addressing big data 
analysis problems where they dump data into this file system and crunch on it for a while and maybe find some, some findings and reports. But nobody had figured out how to power applications on this particular stack with SQL. And we came to market being the first Hadoop RDBMS. And that's how the evolution took place. So I, I guess, yeah, what, what does it mean to be the first Hadoop RDBMS? It means that if you have an application that has simultaneous or concurrent readers and writers, and that data for that application is going to be at scale, say beyond terabytes, and you know, essentially growing quickly, and you need to handle that concurrency, the only database that's available on the Hadoop stack that can service that workload is Splice Machine at this time. Mm -hmm. And so it is the only general purpose database as opposed to all of the other SQL on Hadoop, which is analytical in nature. Oh, okay. So we use terms that are typically OLTP versus pure OLAP. Uh, you may be familiar with those terms, right? We are an OLTP, online transaction processing um, database that allows you to essentially have many connections to the database simultaneously updating that database and being able to keep that consistent so nobody sees data that hasn't been formally committed by the application so I can give you sort of this background um, on on the technology underpinning this databases that are OLTP have to adhere to something called the ACID properties. Mm -hmm. And that's a very technical term. It stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. But at the highest level, without getting into the details, it means the following. It really means that if you and I were working on an application and I had to make a million changes to the database and I got through 500,000 of those changes and then something went wrong, and an exception got thrown, and the database is in that state where my changes are there, I can just tell the database to roll back, and it will put the database back into a consistent state before my transaction began. So you never saw any bad data, and that's the way enterprise applications are built today, and that's what we built on the Hadoop stack. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and so you're looking to take on some pretty big competition, right? Like Oracle, IBM, and Microsoft. Um, uh, what are what are your issues with these these companies, and and what's going out on in the traditional RMD RDBMS uh, market? Right. Yeah, it is a David and Goliath story, right? We are taking on giants, um, but frankly, the giants have been around for a very long time and are locked in a different architecture, this centralized architecture. And the giants all want to scale up their customers when they have performance or scalability problems, meaning heavier hardware and heavier um, computational resources in general. And our approach is radically different. It's scale out, meaning use a lot of inexpensive computers networked together break up any big computational problem to be simultaneously processed by all of those cheap processors and get at the problem by using commodity hardware and scaling out rather than scaling up. Hmm. And the other players, the big players, they can't move to that kind of architecture. And we're in a new world where this use of commodity um, hardware is becoming much more ado adopted and is the way to go for cost-effective scaling. And so that's how we come at this problem, philosophically different than the traditional RDBMS players. And frankly, people are very tired of, of writing the big, big checks for their database. Mm -hmm. And we're much more cost-effective. We run on commodity hardware and we literally cost roughly $5,000 a node. So it's not that expensive to scale to petabytes mm -hmm. with our solution. Um, so do you expect 
some sort of pushback or, or some competition? Do you expect them to try to get into um, what you guys are trying to do, the, the bigger guys? I think the bigger guys are going to continue in their, their strategy to scale up. I think it's in everyone's business to make sure that their installed base continues to pay their maintenance fees and that they you know, can get them to pay, pay even larger maintenance fees. So I, I think that in the long run, it's going to take a while before the large players wake up and provide a scale-out solution because I think business and that Clayton Christensen, um, you know, disruptive technology. It's the classic – you know, new technology comes in that's economically at a different point, and it's really hard for the legacy player to sort of just jump to it. So we'll see what happens. I suspect that as the players in the space become bigger, like ourselves, um, there'll be, you know, acquisitions and strategic plays, but it's very early days. We're all getting our first customers. Mm -hmm. um, we've now saw our first customer, Hard Hanks, that's replaced Oracle for their campaign management application. And, um, you know, we are now um, version 1.0 generally available. So it's a very young um, company, and, you know, it's not going to be a threat to an Oracle for a little while. So what we'd like to do is get that 10, 20 customer stories where people are live and deriving um, value and we really don't care about the competition from the legacy players, really, other than that's a great place for us to fish for our prospects. Hmm. Um, and so just um, in the broader sense, what do you think that Splice Machine getting into this and, and doing the um, kind of change in the regional database market up a little bit, um, what do you see as the future for implications for Hadoop and big data in general? Well, there's, there's two things. I'd like to answer the question directly, and I'd like to kind of riff off it a little bit, if you don't mind. But directly, it's changing the face of, of big data because, as I said, big data was originally thought of as big batch analytics. But it turns out that every application is now big data. And it's, it's just because, like, let's take a marketing application, for example. You know, never before could you touch the consumer in so many different ways. It used to be you had a website, maybe you had a, a catalog, and you may have a store, maybe an e-commerce store, but there's only a handful of connections. Now, you have to connect on every social media. You have to be tweeting. You have to be responding to those tweets. You have to be on Facebook. You have to be, you know, of course, on the traditional channels. The amount of data being generated by the interactions you have with your customer base is blowing out of proportion what traditional marketing applications can handle. And therefore, just general marketing applications require a relational database that can scale. And that gives you an example of, you know, how Hadoop is going to be used. Um, it's not just for data science. Hadoop powers applications, real-time concurrent applications. And that's new. And that's something that we're evangelizing. That's something that people are only beginning to realize. It's, it's like when you're telling the story about having a Hadoop RDBMS replacing Oracle to power an application, Nine times out of 10, the CIO will look at you and say, I didn't know you could do that. Mm -hmm. So this is a fantastic time to be bringing this new solution to the table. But the way I'd like to riff off your question a bit is, what's this going to do for the world? And yeah. that's one of the reasons why we're so excited about building this new platform. We're literally enabling people to solve new problems that they couldn't solve before. Whether that's in marketing and being able to get the right message in front of the right person at the right time and servicing customers better, or in financial services, being able to deal with massive fraud detection applications to make transactions safer for the population, for the consumer, or cyber threat security applications where you know, we're onslaught with incredible attacks. You know, you saw that with the recent craziness with regard to the movie, The Interview, 
There's so much more that goes on behind the scenes at our financial institutions and our intelligence and military institutions and even just corporate business that it is going to take this kind of architecture to power the next generation of cyber threat security application. And then I know you've written about the Internet of Things. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just amazing to think about the explosion of devices that's coming. And we see it today, even with just simple handsets, Nest thermostats, things you wear on your watch, on your, on your wrist to monitor your own health and the amazing iWatch and all the things that's coming. These, app, these devices are all generating tremendous amounts of data. What database is going to be able to consume that in real time and allow application developers to build real-time applications? Are they gonna to have to learn all these new technologies or are they gonna be able to write SQL applications like they have been doing for the last 20 years, but do it at scale? And that's what we, we enable. And of course, there's life sciences applications, just being able to put genetic information in with clinical information and other demographic information and be able to have the next generation of life, life science applications couldn't be done before. So I truly believe that we're going to have more impact on the world than just building yet another database. We're going to enable the next generation of hardcore problems to be solved. So you, just as like a, a, an overall takeaway, so scale, price, and speed, you're going to improve all of those. That's correct. Oh. And, and the way you do it is by taking the work for big-ass problems mm -hmm. and spreading it over lots of cheap computers. Mm. Scale out. That's a, that's a unique way of thinking about it, huh? and you guys are the only ones doing it right now. We're very excited about it. There are others that do scale out. Scale out's not our okay. idea. We love scale okay. out. Okay. But, but you know, they're all doing it on proprietary com computational platforms. Nobody has done it on SQL, mm. which is how everyone's trained in the IT world, and no one's done it on SQL on Hadoop like we have. Mm. Perfect. Um, anything else you want to say? No, that's really the story. The story is affordable scale out, as you said, and we're the only Hadoop RDBMS, and we're really looking forward to changing the world and really enabling the powering of the next generation of data-rich applications. All right.